sugar controls pretty much the first thing I learned when I studied nutritional therapy. So it's incredibly important. Um, I'm going to start this presentation with another shade of grey, you know, black white spectrum. This time white is the perfect control of blood glucose, which doesn't really exist. And black represents full blown diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is more of an autoimmune disorder, so it's a little bit different, and we'll focus on type 2 diabetes. En route to type 2 diabetes, the first step is called insulin resistance. Insulin is basically a hormone secreted by the pancreas, and its job is to pull glucose out of the bloodstream so that our glucose levels don't go too high, and then get it into a, an active cell, such as muscle, kidney cell, heart cell, for example. But insulin resistance means that the bouncer on the door of those cells says, sorry, sorry, son, you can't come in. And then it ends up being pushed into fat storage, which is why the belly fat that you know, many men and increasing numbers of women are complaining about is to do with insulin, to do with blood glucose. Progressively, the cells become more and more resistant to insulin. And what happens is you get into a state called metabolic syndrome, which is more than just bad glucose control. It will be associated with elevated blood glucose sometimes, um, certainly high insulin levels. You'll find high triglycerides in the blood, which is your blood fats. Maybe cholesterol levels go up and sometimes blood pressure goes up. Finally, we reach the state of diabetes, and that's basically when we can't control the blood glucose levels anymore. Essentially, the pancreas, after years of pushing out more and more insulin, becomes tired, just like any other gland in the body, perhaps like uh, thyroid fatigue. Um, the pancreas releases not enough insulin, and then you're not regulating your blood sugars. This is very toxic to the arteries and has big cardiovascular consequences if it's not controlled in some way. This diagram shows the kinds of foods that are associated with insulin resistance, where glucose is more likely to be dumped into fat storage. We all know, know about the negative influence of sugar and refined carbs, but I also want to highlight here that we have saturated and refined fats because our low carb, high fat disciples seem to have missed that point. Too much of the wrong kinds of fats can make your insulin receptors less flexible. So how do we sensitize our insulin receptors? By eating good foods, of course, it's that simple. These particular fruits and vegetables are very colorful and contain a lot of antioxidants, which are really good for the um, insulin receptors. So too are good oils, which essentially come from nuts and seeds and fish and also their oils. Look at this blood sugar curve. It goes without saying that the green curve is where we want to be with our blood sugar control. If our blood sugars rise too much, like in, in the red curve, a lot of insulin needs to be released to take the sugar out of the bloodstream. If, though, the, the cells don't need the sugar at that time, for example, you know, you're sitting at, desk, at your desk doing some work, the sugar might be stuffed into fat storage. And as I've already explained, the long-term risk is insulin resistance and eventually potentially diabetes. Also, what goes up must come down. Once the insulin has panicked and pulled the sugar out of the bloodstream, your blood sugars generally come crashing down meaning low energy and low mood, unless you're able to pump out some stress hormones which can push the blood sugar levels back up again. Or you could just, like many people do, have some sugar or coffee, you know, that afternoon 3 p.m. slump. But sometimes when you do that, the blood sugar levels go too high, meaning that the insulin and cortisol essentially play bat and ball all day long. By doing this, not only are you exhausting your pancreas and increasing your risk of diabetes, but you're also exhausting your adrenal glands, increasing your risk of burnout. 
Tune in to 12 Steps to Wholesome Nutrition, where I, I spend more time explaining how to balance your blood glucose levels through exercise, stress management, and of course, eating well.